I am Ahmed Daoud and today we will continue our discussion on decision trees. So we started from uh, the challenge that we usually face in decision tree overfitting and then we have discussed how we can avoid overfitting. We discussed uh, two approaches. One of them was uh, the post pruning and second was pre pruning. So till now uh, we have not uh, uh, discuss the post pruning approach how the process is carried out uh, in the case of post pruning but we have started to discuss pre pruning part how we can pre prune the decision tree so that we can avoid overfitting so for that uh, we discussed that uh, two points we should uh, understand first we have to understand the hyper parameters of the decision tree so that we can restrict our growth of the decision tree uh, before to uh, build the model okay we can uh, restrict the uh, hyper param uh, our uh, growth of the algorithm uh, by passing some values to their hyper parameters so that it will grow such type of decision tree that will not lead to some problem like overfitting okay for that we have uh, done a lot of discussion on the hyper parameters and along the way we also have a, a quick recap on the uh, CV part cross validation. What are the importance of cross validation? And then today we uh, you are already familiar with the grid cell CV. You are already familiar with the uh, hyper parameters of the decision tree. What hyper parameters actually can control the growth of decision tree? And you are already familiar with all of the concept that we need for the pre pruning part. In that particular session, I will uh, focus on the uh, that particular code. And I, I just pass through uh, the whole process so that you can get an idea. You are already familiar with all of this stuff. So that's why uh, I am here using the same data set, same problem statement that we have discussed in the part of logistic regression in which uh, here the problem is to uh, design such type of decision rule that can classify the what type of persons uh, are at good risk or bad risk what type of person will default in future or not default in future so that loan manager can uh, approve the loan to the persons uh, uh, by taking some help from the model that we will build okay so uh, this uh, model can uh, enhance the uh, the taking of or the power of decision or uh, taking decision uh, for the loan manager so you are already familiar with that problem uh, we have done a, a lot of uh, eda uh, and uh, we have seen a lot of graphs in that case uh, so if you uh, have to uh, recap you can uh, see the videos that we have for, uh, for the logistic regression part okay all of done uh, all of the stuff uh, regarding ADA we already have done so I am just uh, jumping towards the part of model building okay so uh, in model building uh, as we discussed previously that uh, first of all we have to analyze what type of uh, problem statement we have and what we are going to do and what type of error is more dangerous for us okay so that we build such type of model that uh, uh, should have less mistakes regarding that type of error so in the model building part uh, we know that uh, there uh, this is a binary classification problem that uh, our model has to predict default or not default okay so <clears throat> uh, model can make wrong predictions in the uh, two ways predicting a customer is uh, not going to default but in reality customer will default in that case we will have loss of resources and if our model will predict a customer is going to default but in reality the customer will not in that case we will lose our potential of our customer which loss is greater loss of resources will be greater loss for the bank because uh, if you are giving one lakh of the loan uh, loan amount one lakh and uh, your interest or profit on that is ten thousand then in case of false positive when you will predict that customer uh, will uh, default in future but actually not you will lose a 10,000 of profit okay you will lose a customer but if your model will predict negative that you, uh, means that your uh, customer will not default but actually he 
or she will default in future then uh, the bank will lose one lakh of resources so in that case so false negative is uh, more dangerous compared to false positive so to uh, reduce the false negative chances we have selected here recall as a best measure and we want such type of model that should have maximum recall okay so this is the data set and you are already familiar with all of the columns age sex job housing saving account checking account credit amount duration risk is our target variable and purpose okay and here we can see there are a lot of uh, categorical columns and now we will convert these categorical columns into some numerical form okay there are 700 uh, samples belong to the zero class and 300 samples belong to one class it means that our data is uh, quite uh, unbalanced there are a lot of samples belong to zero class uh, here also uh, according to each category in uh, 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 categorical column uh, their their counts are here as a output you can visualize and you are already familiar with that if you want to uh, have a uh, uh, understanding of that uh, data set again you can uh, review the uh, lectures of uh, logistic regression case study okay so we have uh, ordinal attributes here so two attributes are here ordinal saving account and checking account in that we have little moderate rich and quite rich in saving count four categories and little moderate and rich three categories are in checking account so we uh, we know that when we have ordinal attribute we can convert into the same type of numerical form so that the order will maintain uh, and uh, we will uh, uh, get such type of model that can uh, have the uh, uh, understanding or that have learned the pattern in the same order like categories were present in the column okay so uh, maybe uh, you have a question that why we did not in the case of logistic regression so it's up to you you can also uh, do in the case of uh, logistic regression also it's not a, a big problem okay in the case of uh, logistic uh, I, I think that we have uh, converted all the categorical columns in one hot uh, encoding uh, into uh, multiple binary columns you can say but here i am converting my ordinal attributes into a uh, numerical form which will be have some order okay and uh, nominal attributes here are sex job housing purpose that have no any order these are just nominal attributes so that's why i will convert them into one hot encoding first of all i will uh, convert my cat uh, ordinary categorical uh, columns here here i also have mentioned that encoding categorical variables to numerical is a necessary uh, if we are using decision tree from the sqln because cyclean implementation does not support categorical variables or input variables for now okay actual decision tree as i told you previously uh, actually support the missing values and categorical columns uh, but uh, escalon uh, uh, does not do that okay so uh, now i am converting my nominal attributes by using pd.get dummy uh, pandas uh, function into some all hot encoding columns okay so here you can see all of the columns are in some numerical form now uh, i have separated into x and y then i have separated uh, with the 30 70 ratio into train test split so uh, uh, in case of standard scaling there is no need to uh, do uh, scaling here uh, the reason is that each column during the uh, training process you can uh, you know uh, uh, we have done an example on the entry also each column is individually is processed here in during the training process uh, each column is uh, individually analyzed that uh, 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 each value of uh, each column uh, how much producing the uh, how much uh, it can reduce the impurity uh, we analyze each column and uh, uh, although we, we uh, also analyze each value of each column so each column uh, processed individually uh, compared to other like in the uh, case of uh, linear models we have uh, multiple columns and uh, during the training process there are some summations because uh, 
all time uh, by the equation you can analyze that when you have bx plus c equation then you are summing up and when you have calculated the error then you have to calculate the error like uh, uh, what is a uh, true value oh and the difference between true and predicted value okay in that way uh, in the logistic regression you are also familiar with that but in the case of decision tree all columns are individually processed so that's why uh, there is no need to do uh, some sort of scaling here like in the uh, logistic and the linear regression also there is uh, no much uh, standard scaling cannot increase the uh, you can say accuracy it is just for the case if we have to do analyze our uh, coefficients okay so that we can see which variable have how much relation with uh, the darker column in in that sense we usually do standard scaling and you uh, i also have explained that part in the case of uh, logistic regression but for now there is no need to do scaling here and it is also mentioned in the decision tree uh, by sql and documentation that uh, there is very little uh, data preparation required for the decision tree models so here uh, without any restriction of hyperparameter values i am uh, going to use my default decision tree with the uh, default hyperparameter values okay it means there will be no restriction on the uh, growth of the tree it will generate the tree in a natural way like the algorithm will work in that way it keeps on separating the uh, data points uh, if there is some decrease in impurity to get some uh, pure leaves and here you can see that when i have calculated a recall on the train and test you can see here like on the training data set uh, it is giving 100 percent score but on the test data set it is giving very less about that uh, 40 percent score on the testing data set you can see a lot of difference in the uh, score of train and uh, test data set yeah, it means it has uh, learned all the patterns quite well of the training data point now it is not able to generalize the future data points so or new data point that it has not seen during its uh, training part okay so uh, it is uh, quite uh, straightforward that model is overfitting here okay so uh, if you can see accuracy in the case of accuracy again 100 percent but on testing data set it's 63 uh, uh, which is also uh, not uh, a good or you can say uh, can uh, show you that the model is overfitting here okay so here you can see the confusion matrix there are uh, the, uh, this number of uh, uh, prediction model has predicted as a negative sample and there are 52 samples that are predicted as a false negative and there are 59 samples that are predicted as a positive but false false positives are 59 okay so our aim is to reduce 52 false negatives as much as i can okay or our model can uh, but uh, it does not mean that uh, we can bear any number of false positives we also reduce that also okay so uh, now you can see the decision tree with the default uh, hyperparameter values and uh, you know uh, from here you can see that what are the default hyperparameter values it is mentioned here uh, here you can see criterion genie separated best maximum depth none it means that it, it can grow up to any depth mean sample split two uh, mean sample leave one which is uh, 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 can also lead to the towards the uh, part of uh, overfitting because mean sample leaf uh, uh, one means there are you you are getting pure leaves okay mean fraction leaves zero and max feature is equal to none and you can see all the default parameters uh, have uh, or you can say not putting any restriction on the growth of the tree okay uh, now you can see here this decision tree uh, it has produced a very complex decision tree even we cannot uh, analyze it here uh, there are a lot of uh, desired rules here it is generating and uh, quite complex it is okay so there is a, another uh, function provided uh, by a uh, tree uh, which is uh, imported from sql and uh, uh, sql from sql and uh, it is imported and tree dot export text you can also use if you want to analyze your uh, decision rules in the form of text here like you can see here the uh, whatever sample have duration less than 16.5 and age less than 33.5 or grand amount less than 959 
house rent less than 0 0.5 means house rent uh, uh, he has not rented a house uh, duration less than 7.5 per uh, proposed education less than 0 0.5 again uh, uh, there is no purpose for the education uh, then uh, uh, the sample will be classified as a class 0 okay because here you can see the page is 6 7 okay so you can also export in this way your decision tree rules so our model uh, that we have here built uh, as a decision tree as uh, 18 depth which is uh, a lot of uh, depth you can see here uh, here you can also analyze it is quite difficult to see even each node here okay and there are 187 leaves that model has produced now if we will do the pre pruning part and uh, again i will give you a, a revise i know you are already familiar one by one how we can use uh, just to uh, uh, show you that what is uh, the behavior when we are changing our values on the recall score here you can see if i have decreased my max leaf node from uh, 187 to 40 uh, here uh, uh, my training uh, score on training data set is also decreased a lot and uh, on the test data set also uh, reduced uh, but here uh, there is uh, very less difference between score on test and train uh, but uh, uh, now it is under training the uh, under trained model okay uh, from our fitting we uh, now uh, you can say this uh, particular uh, uh, hyperparameter value led to what's the under trained now if we will pass 10 value or to mean sample leaf it means minimum samples uh, or should be at each leaf node 10 if there is a node which is producing more than or less than uh, producing uh, leaves which are having less than uh, 10 samples it will not uh, allow that type of splitting so in that case again uh, our model is under trend okay so again uh, if mean sample split is 30 uh, uh, our model again is under trend okay uh, you can see the max depth in the case of max depth it is quite uh, very bad it is performing like a 35 percent accuracy on the uh, training data points and 20 percent it means uh, whenever uh, you will pass some uh, new data point to that the model 7 it, it will be uh, there will be just 20 percent chance that it will uh, predict a a class a class that uh, uh, twenty percent it will correctly classify your data point. So now uh, the hyper parameter tuning part uh, and uh, we are going to give such CV. So before that we have to some specify some range of values for each hyper parameter. So here we are going to do that here. Okay, so here uh, you can analyze uh, like in the criterion we have uh, three possible uh, values available but uh, here I am uh, using two Gini and Entropy. The reason that log loss is uh, same as Entropy. Okay, in the case of max depth, uh, I know that there is maximum depth is 18. Okay, so there is uh, no such a rule that uh, what value you have to pass. You have to analyze it by yourself uh, like how I have analyzed. Uh, I have seen that there are 18 depth is our, our default uh, decision tree is getting. If I will uh, decrease the uh, uh, pass the values that have uh, lower depth like 12, 8 and 4, what will uh, be the best value for our uh, according to grade search approach. Okay, so I am just passing these values uh, randomly. There is no such a uh, you can say uh, strict rule. Okay. Uh, but in case if uh, let's say after running grid search approach uh, grid search CV method uh, if your uh, best parameter value of max depth will be 18 then you can again redesign your uh, values of maximum depth uh, it will uh, you can uh, uh, redesign in that way like 18 20 24 20, uh, 30 so that uh, uh, it can uh, uh, if there is a chance that uh, your uh, model can have good hyperparameter value beyond the 18 or uh, more than 18 as a max depth then you can again revise your uh, hyperparameter values ranges of hyperparameter values okay okay instead of that i i I, uh, I should do here okay so here i have designed uh, max depth 
4, 8, 12, 18. Uh, minimum sample separate by default it is, uh, uh, you know, 2. So I have designed here 2, 6, 10, 16. Okay. Mm, uh, let's say if uh, uh, after running grid search approach, you will get like a 16 a best parameter value for mean sample split. Then again, you can design in that way like 16 or 20, 24 and uh, let's say 30. Uh, this range of value and uh, again you will run another grid approach okay but if in one go you will range uh, define a lot of range uh, then it it will generate a lot of models here okay like uh, uh, these hyperparameters uh, if i will pass these hyperparameters uh, it is generating 24000 models means we have to train 24000 models so you can see how much time it will uh, take for that process okay even if one value you will add here let's say uh, 20 how much time uh, model uh, how much more uh, than this 24000 we have to train the models so it means uh, like a 2 uh, into uh, 4 for this mean sample split sorry Four into four into one two three four into six into two into four. Uh, you can see six thousand. Uh, there will be more six thousand combination. It will generate if we will pass just one value here. Okay, we will add one value in the in that particular range. And uh, 6000 is range, and again, uh, due to cross validation, it have to generate uh, train five models for each combination of value. So you can see uh, there will be 30,000 model it has to uh, create more. Okay, and previously, how many we are having? Or uh, 12, uh, 1 lakh 22,000 here. So then, if I will add here uh, 20 value, uh, let's say I will increase this range. And make it 20. Now the uh, the model here will be one lakh. Uh, if I will add here 30,720 plus the value, then we have to train one lakh fifty three thousand six hundred models. Okay, so you can analyze how much uh, time increase by adding just one value here. Okay, so you have to uh, specify just. Uh, uh, a, a very small range of values so that you uh, uh, your grid search up uh, this cell grid search CVO will take less time okay then again you can redesign your ranges uh, like I am saying if uh, it is uh, giving to you 60 if you want to more uh, optimal value then again you can redesign according to that let's say in that particular case it will select 10 as the best value then you can design in that way like a seven nine ten uh, thirteen like you can design in that way the new range of values and you can run again a great search approach okay so here uh, you are seeing uh, uh, i have defined uh, values for each hyperparameter and here uh, in the case of mean weight fraction leave i have passed this value there is no uh, strict rule like i am passing here uh, I have just analyzed in, uh, I am passing the values in the same way like I have passed in the mean sample leaf. Uh, so uh, there are 700 samples in the uh, uh, training part. So I am just dividing 1 over 700, 4 over 700, over 700. It means whenever uh, 1 over 700 mean, uh, whenever, uh, if our model will use uh, this uh, uh, mean weight fraction leaf value, Uh, then it will uh, uh, multiply that fraction uh, with the uh, you can say total number of data points that our uh, uh, model will have uh, during training so it means total number of data points will be 700 and it will give you this will give you one okay so uh, it, it means mean fraction leave uh, mean weighted fraction leave minimum weight weight fraction for each leaf uh, that uh, uh, can be produced for the separating of node uh, should be greater or equal to the one okay so i am passing here you can pass whatever values but i am just passing here 
when you so uh, let's say if uh, it will uh, during the uh, after grid search it will select this value then again you can regard design your uh, range of values okay i am passing class grades balance or none uh, let's say here you have seen that uh, there are uh, uh, more uh, samples belong to zero class and less belong to the one class so there is unbalanced data set so uh, i am passing both uh, values to class weight if for my data set uh, uh, if I will make my data set balanced, what, uh, what will be the uh, best parameter values? And if I will make uh, my, uh, I will pass my data as it is uh, like unbalanced data, what will uh, be the behavior of my model? Okay. So here I, I have designed, uh, there is uh, again, uh, no uh, circuit uh, definition that how you have to uh, design the range of values. I have designed by, uh, by you can say a little bit of brainstorming on these uh, hyperparameters. And after uh, running this uh, grid search here, I have uh, designed, uh, uh, you can say here, I have uh, declared my grid search CV object and uh, I am passing here as estimate of my decision tree with the random state is, is equal to one or uh, to get a pre uh, deterministic behavior of random state. Whenever I will run that code again, uh, I will get same type of uh, decision tree or the same type of value. So that's why I have passed a random value. Here, uh, estimatory decision tree parameters that I have here create a dictionary uh, of the uh, uh, hyperparameter as a keys and their values. Scoring in the recall and the CV is 5, uh, verbosity uh, uh, is equal to 2. How much information I want during the running of that cell? And George is equal to 1. Uh, I want to use all the processors of or all the cores of my uh, CPU uh, during running that cell. Okay, here I have uh, fit uh, the model. Uh, it will take some time for you uh, when you will run it on your uh, laptop or PC. So here it has uh, generated uh, uh, like uh, there are 24,000 or you can say 24 about 25,000 combination of values uh, we have passed means uh, we have uh, 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 tested 25,000 combination of uh, values of hyperparameters and uh, total uh, fit how uh, much model it has trained are uh, 12,000 uh, 1 lakh 22,880 okay so what are the best parameter values here you can see balanced class weight uh, in your criteria entropy maximum depth 4 max leaf node 4 uh, minimum impurity decrease 0 and these are the values it has selected as best parameter values so uh, best score it is saying that 74 percent and uh, best score with respect to recall okay as it has selected class weight as a balanced it means uh, now it will uh, use the same uh, formula like we discussed in the case of balanced here uh, in the case of class balanced it will use that technique Okay, it will assign uh, each sample to some weight according to the frequency of their class. Okay, uh, to which class it belongs. Uh, like uh, I have used the same formula and uh, here uh, if uh, we will train a model with a class weight is equal to balanced, then it will give each sample belonging to zero class uh, 0.72 weight and each sample belonging to one class 1.64 weight. Okay. Uh, now it will increase the weight of uh, samples belonging to class 1 and decrease the weight of uh, samples belonging to class 0 uh, so that it can make the data set balanced okay so uh, uh, here it has selected a uh, mean impurity uh, sorry mean frac mean weight fraction leaf 0 0.0014 okay or you can say 143 uh, it is the 1 over 700 now whenever uh, 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 when each split uh, or uh, uh, whenever a node has to split uh, it will uh, see that uh, each leaf should produce this amount of weight okay uh, means uh, 0 0.00143 into 700 uh, means about one weight should be at each leaf node when the model is going to split and you can see here if uh, your model is uh, doing a uh, uh, splitting on node and uh, one node is producing let's say 
if your model is doing a separating on that particular node and it is produ producing a child node this one and this one okay and uh, let's say in that child node there are just one sample which is belonging to zero class okay and there are multiple samples okay there are multiple samples let's say there are five samples now here you can see zero class sample have a, a weight 0 0.72 okay which is uh, less than 2 1 that uh, we have specified in the mean weight fraction leaf so this split will not be allowed okay so whenever uh, you can see here that we have specified mean weighted fraction leaf uh, uh, like our grid approach has selected that mean weight fraction leaf 0 0.00143 is the best value okay mm -hmm okay so uh, now i am going to pass the values that i have selected my grid search cv uh, uh, told me that these are the best so i have uh, trained my model with these uh, best hyperparameter values now i will not uh, get that type of overfitted model uh, now i have put some restrictions on my on the growth boy model like maximum depth should be four uh, like previously with the default hyperparameter values the depth maximum depth was one uh, 18 okay maximum leaf node here it is saying that 4 in that in the previous case with default values 187 uh, maximum leaf nodes okay so i hope here we will get a very generalized model but uh, again we want also that it should perform good on the test data set also now uh, here uh, the scores uh, like it is performing uh, giving 56 percent accuracy on train on data set 53 on test data set it is uh, better than the default values uh, in the default case it is about uh, uh, like a 39 percent or about 40 percent accuracy but uh, here 53 uh, but again it is uh, not much good okay in the case of uh, recall on testing data set it is giving 54 percent and uh, with the default values it was about uh, 32 percent as we have seen that our accuracies or our scores increased when we have uh, uh, find out some best values for the model but again these are uh, not uh, quite much uh, you can say it's not a much reliable model because uh, it is not giving so much uh, you can say satisfiable scores here okay uh, here you can see from uh, about 52 false negatives it reduced to 31 now we will see the uh, uh, decision tree that uh, uh, model 8 has created or how it looks like here you can see uh, this is the decision tree that it have which is uh, quite small with the just a depth 2 okay and which is quite small here uh, now we will analyze their rules how it will predict here you can see uh, uh, like here uh, uh, when we have passed the values uh, to this model uh, as a train in the, our training data set if I will show you here in our training data set how much we have samples belonging to zero class and how much we were having belonging to uh, test uh, sorry one class so we can check here Here you can see 486 uh, samples belong to zero class and 214 samples belong to one class. Okay, so I will write here zero have 486 samples and uh, if you can see here and one class have two something I can see again 214. Okay, and total was. Uh, 700 samples we have for training data point but here you can see the value is showing that both have 350 now you can uh, see that it is not here calculating the number of samples instead it is calculating the weight of the samples some of the weight of the samples belonging to zero class and some of the weight of the samples belonging to one class okay and like here you can see again 
okay so there is one interesting uh, 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 aspect that i want to tell you here uh, like this uh, when you will go uh, let's say uh, a new data point which has less than duration 16.5 you will go towards this side and then you will check the age less than uh, equal to 33.5 you will go towards this node and this node is predicting the class 0 and if your age is uh, greater than uh, 33.5 and you have duration less than 65 you will go towards this side and again your sample is uh, your model is predicting class 0 and it is the again the same case on this side it means there is no use of that particular rule okay because uh, this rule again producing the zero class and zero class and this rule again producing one class and one class okay uh, and if we will stop that here at this position so we can predict that as it is class y0 and class is equal to y1 just on the base of uh, duration 16.1 uh, 16.5 it will give the same result because uh, these uh, uh, nodes are giving the uh, same there is no uh, you can say uh, it is uh, this uh, rule is not uh, distinguishing between uh, both classes uh, it is producing uh, in both cases same uh, predicting same class and this rule also predicting the same class so uh, we can uh, put the restriction on the model uh, like uh, I have uh, commented uh, let's say here Hmm. Sorry. Okay. Uh, so instead of uh, depth four, we can also pass depth one two. It will give the same result. So, uh, zero one depth one. Okay. So if I will uncomment this one, and you will see here I have passed depth is equal to one. It will give the same result 72 on test uh, train and 62 on the test data set recall score. Here you can see 72 and 63. In that way, you can again visualize how, how your model is uh, predicted and what type of uh, uh, structure of your model is obtained during the training part. Now, this model. Uh, according to our uh, hyperparameter tuning uh, with the grid set C is producing this type of model as a best model uh, for the uh, which is having best recall and it is it is just a decision tree with one decision node and two ter uh, terminal nodes and uh, the decision tree with the uh, depth one also called a stump okay so uh, it is quite simple and you can also see uh, whichever sample which have a duration less than 16.5 it is predicting as a, a sample belong to uh, predicting the class as zero and which uh, whichever uh, duration ha uh, sample have duration uh, greater than 16.5 it is predicted as a class one okay class one and class zero so there are 31 air predictions that predicting as uh, class 0 but this is false there are 108 samples uh, uh, which is it is predicting as a class 1 but it is false when we you will calculate uh, by yourself the recall so recall will be uh, true positive divided by true positive plus false negative and it is 64 on the test data set you can see also okay uh, now we will uh, run a grid search approach on uh, and by having a uh, different measure instead of recall i am going to use accuracy here okay okay so uh, now we will have a look uh, what hyperparameter values uh, should be when we have a different performance measure uh, which will be accuracy okay like in the case of recall we have seen uh, uh, i was wrong at that point our accuracy is decreased uh, like here we can see our accuracy is decreased uh, but our recall is increased compared to the default uh, model with default hyperparameter values like uh, in the case of default hyperparameter values our uh, recall was uh, having 40% score on the test 
while our accuracy was having 63% on the test data set. Here our accuracy is decreased but our recall is increased as I uh, or we have uh, uh, tried here to find out best parameter values with respect to recall and this can be the cause here. Okay. Uh, now we will uh, have a look on the uh, part of uh, uh, grid search CV with respect to accuracy and uh, here you can see uh, this model we have obtained in the case of recall it is uh, not much satisfactory model uh, for the case of uh, per, uh, for the sake of uh, production level and it is not much good okay uh, uh, but here uh, we can use that uh, model uh, for the analyze uh, purpose uh, like we can say that duration is one of the uh, important uh, can be one of the important feature compared to other features uh, if we have to predict uh, about uh, some positive point understand uh, like uh, uh, here we are saying that uh, whenever our, uh, this model will see we'll see a new data point a new positive data point a new sample belonging to positive class there will be 63 percent chance that uh, this model will predict correctly okay uh, so because the recall is true positive rate okay so this model is not much satisfactory here okay now we are going to see a uh, grid, uh, grid search uh, uh, cv with respect to accuracy what should be the best parameter values with respect to accuracy okay uh, so uh, i have specified a lot of values uh, like in the case of uh, previously, uh, 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 one or seven hundred is selected in the case of uh, previous uh, uh, grid search CV for a recall. Uh, you can also re uh, like it was the last one value of the range. You can again redesign your range uh, by uh, passing some uh, by having some range which have some uh, lower values uh, than this uh, particular value. Okay, so here. Uh, my best uh, scoring uh, performance measure is accuracy again uh, i have trained here uh, uh, less uh, uh, number of models compared to the previous case because i have decreased here i have changed some values here okay now best parameter values here are balanced class weight again it uh, 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 selected balanced entropy maximum depth it has selected 18 Again, the same uh, 120 node uh, in uh, like uh, in the case of default, it was 187. Uh, and min uh, weight fraction, if it has selected different one 0 0.0057, uh, we can see uh, uh, what it is 0 0.577 into 700. Uh, uh, like 4 over 700 has selected. We will divide here. 4 over 700 over like yeah it has selected 4 over 700 as the minimum weight fraction leap okay uh, so uh, now we will see uh, what will be the accuracy here our recall is decreased uh, 45 uh, percent uh, with the default hyper parameters it was uh, about 40 percent now it has 45 okay uh, but uh, in the case of grid search see with respect to recall it was increased to 63 but in the case of accuracy uh, again decreased here you can see accuracy uh, 59 uh, it is decreased here uh, like in the case of default hyperparameter values we were having 63 uh, although we were having a lot of difference in uh, the score of train and test uh, like uh, in the case of default hyperparameters we were having 100% score on the train uh, but 63% uh, on the test data set in the case of uh, default hyperparameters like here you can see okay but uh, if, when we have trained uh, selected some uh, hyperparameter values for, uh, as uh, 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 when we have performance measure accuracy then uh, our accuracy is decreased here okay uh, it decreases to, uh, uh, from 62 to uh, uh, 59 okay so if we will see that model uh, it is uh, again a quite complex model okay so till now uh, you have seen that uh, this per uh, the purpose of that uh, session is to uh, just to uh, pass through the whole process for you you can uh, again redesign your uh, ranges of values like i mentioned uh, first you can uh, design your range of values uh, by uh, having some brainstorming on the hyperparameters 
and the result so for default uh, model then uh, you can again redesign uh, uh, your uh, ranges uh, range of values uh, and you can perform multiple iterations on the grid search part and you can uh, you can go towards the pa uh, part uh, to have uh, to specify some good range of values uh, so that you are able to get some optimal values for the hyperparameters okay so uh, i have here performed just once uh, you can perform multiple times grid approach by uh, changing some ranges with respect to different results okay so this session uh, uh, here we have seen that we are not getting some satisfactory answers or some satisfactory model uh, when we are uh, doing the uh, uh, approach of uh, pre pruning okay we are uh, trying to get the model which is uh, uh, we are trying to get the uh, pre pruned model okay but uh, in the second approach which is uh, post pruning we first train the model with default hyperparameter values and then we uh, cut down the branches that are creating overfitting okay uh, then uh, now we will analyze in the case of post pruning first we will learn what is post pruning how the process is carried out theoretically and practically then we will uh, try to implement post pruning and uh, try to solve that problem and we will see that what will happen in the post pruning either we are getting some good result in the post pruning some good model or either it is uh, performing bad compared to pre prune but here decision tree uh, here you have seen that it is uh, 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 very you can say sensitive towards the overfitting it, uh, it can lead easily towards the overfitting and when we have tried to uh, decrease the overfitting it led towards the underfitting part okay so decision tree is uh, not performing here quite well and uh, uh, for now uh, it's enough but uh, i can tell you that uh, decision tree is uh, also in production level it is not much good uh, to uh, deploy it as a model uh, instead there is another powerful models like random forest so decision tree can be uh, in which there are multiple decision trees instead of just one we create and we create a model that have multiple decision trees okay so that type of model uh, is more powerful compared to a single decision tree we will learn in coming modules about the random forest and ensemble techniques but decision tree can be used for the uh, analyze purpose like we have seen that uh, duration is uh, 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 you can say duration is uh, uh, the most uh, or important feature compared to all other features in case of recall okay uh, but actually for the production level it is not much good here in the case of uh, accuracy it is again the duration is the uh, at the top level it means it decreased uh, a lot of impurity compared to all other split points or all other variables or compared to all other variables best splits okay okay so far now uh, just uh, don't underestimate the uh, decision tree uh, either it is not performing quite well here but it can be used for a uh, uh, lot of purposes and as i told you it is a base of random forest which is quite powerful model so if you have a strong grip on the decision tree you will be able to get good understanding of random forest also okay so don't underestimate uh, keep on learning and uh, it performed uh, quite well and it have a lot of other advantages uh, if it is not performing well here uh, there is a no much problem here okay so we will uh, in the next sessions we will start a more post pruning part so for now thank you